Hey all you colorful sprinkles, it's Willow, and today I'm picking up my friend Hazel and we're going to Tomo, Wisconsin. Let's go! Our first stop in Tomo, Wisconsin is the Antique Mall, and there is so much to see here, you won't believe some of the things we bump into. Now I've never been to this place before, so I'm excited to check it out with you for the first time. Come along with us and let's start the show. Right in the entrance, I was greeted by Laurel and Hardy. How do you doing, boys? Hello? This place is an antique mall, which means there's a lot of different vendors throughout this building, so everyone has some unique stuff that they bring to their booth. Like this breath savers dispenser. I adore this pink top hat. It is so pretty and it's made out of glass, although it was a little bit out of my price range. Being that they wanted $395 for it, I thought that was a little much, but it really is beautiful. Have you ever seen such unique salt and pepper shakers before? I've never seen so many in one place. Like, look at all these. They're different shapes and creatures. Usually you just get some normal salt and pepper shakers with a couple weird shapes of fruits and stuff, but this is everything as a salt shaker. You never know what they'll turn into a salt and pepper shaker. Okay, if there's anyone who is a toy collector watching my videos, does anyone know what this monkey is from? Like what it's called, what the brand name is? I've seen it before and it's so familiar looking. Let me know in the comments. If you're an Elvis fan, there's no shortage of the Elvis merch here. They have a whole wall of it. Some neat local history, they actually had some old school yearbooks from the area. One of the sellers turned old pool balls into bottle openers, which I thought was a brilliant idea. There was 10% off on all uranium glass right now, but I was kind of sidetracked because right next to the uranium glass, I found this old bop it. This one was kind of beat up though. It looked like someone been bopping it too hard. Disney always seems to follow me places. And of course we found some Snow White figures here at the store. Imagine being in an antique store and running into a photo of your relatives. I bet that's happened before. There was so much to look at here, it was hard to stay focused on what I was looking for, which was any of my nostalgia from the 90s. These puppets look really cool though, they look like Punch and Judy puppets. I'm sure you've heard of the Beatles. What are the Beatles? They had a bunch of the Beatles yellow submarine action figures, which was neat to see them all together. It's kind of a mashup of fandoms with Scooby-Doo and It's a Wonderful Life, Barbie and Wizard of Oz. Oh, and a really large Star Trek collection. I didn't know they made a Campbell's Soup Barbie. I mean, I guess I should have figured because they made every other Barbie, but this is definitely one of the more unique Barbies I've seen. Also, I might have to come back and get these because this is such a big part of my childhood. I used to listen to the Spice Girls growing up and I would love to have the complete set of these dolls. If only I had a space to put them. I'm going to get the spice rack. I was kind of hoping this train track would be operational, but it didn't appear to be. They just have it on display. Maybe they have it for sale even. There's always weird things in antique stores, but sometimes there are just some that shouldn't. I wanted to riffle through the postcards like I normally do at the antique malls, but unfortunately these were behind glass and I didn't want to take the time to get someone to open them up for me. Check out these super cool tin toys on these shelves here. The pops of yellow, red, and blue are just so fun and playful, aren't they? I've been dreaming of starting my own tin toy collection, especially with the circus themed ones, but let's be real, it's a bit pricey for me. So right now I just gotta save up those pennies until I can dive into that collection. I've gotta keep up with the collections I already have.
someone on my previous video commented to show more of the fishing stuff. So I wanted to make sure that I got all the fishing stuff this store had. They actually had several containers worth, but I just wanted to give you a good view of the selection they had. They actually had a whole bunch of them. What would an antique mall be without vintage Mickey Mouse? And of course, my favorite thing in this entire store, this taxidermy squirrel. Do you think I should get it? A fun piece of local history, we have the Illinois State Fair from like 1930s to 1940s. And then also below the Illinois State Fair, they have the Vernon County Fair, which we went to before. That's up in Viroqua. And those go back to 1935 as well. A little piece of small town history. It's always time for cookies. Especially in this cookie jar. I think this is supposed to be a mouse, but he kind of looks weird looking. These are a lot of obscure games. I've seen shoots and ladders before, but some of these I had never heard of. Although I was really fascinated by the Howdy Doody TV game, which I might come back for. Leave it to me to find all the clowns. You've probably heard of Bozo the Clown, but have you heard of Bozo Lee Clown? The French version. I haven't. I am a clown! I remember owning this Guinness Book of World Records. It's so weird to see this in an antique store. I've never seen such a variety of tin toys until I hit this store because there's so many crazy different ones out there that I never knew existed. I'm not very big on sports cards, but they had an abundance here. And look at all the different ones. They're all labeled by the year. And then down here in the cases, they have some more of the rare cards. I didn't see any Pokemon though. One thing I miss from Florida is the orange juice, and they had a Tropicana sign. I miss orange juice. Actually, they had a lot of signs, mostly advertising sodas and beers. This, I'm not sure what it was, but it appears to be some sort of swimming toy. It looked really interesting. I like the art style. It's just really pretty. And it was also in this case with all these awesome tin toys and different toys from the past. And I just love this circus wagon and how ornate it looks. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know you like what I'm doing. Earlier we met Bozo Lee Clown and here's Bozo the Clown. In an earlier video, I got one of these mechanical clown banks before. This one though is not a reproduction. This one is an $820 1800s clown bank, which this is awesome. I would love it if he was in a little better shape, but I probably also wouldn't be able to afford it. I remember seeing that stilt walking clown at the antique store by the Dells, so I'm glad to see there's more of that around. I'm going to have to keep looking for one because I would like one for my own collection. When I saw these, I kind of thought they looked like Daleks a little bit. I am such a Dalek. They also had a large number of military things, but unfortunately, they also had a lot of Nazi memorabilia, which I found very unethical to have in a store. Like, why would anyone own this to begin with? And why would you pay $800 for it? I just don't understand it. Remember when I said there's scary things around every corner? Well, then there's also this thing. On our way out the door, we spotted this concert roller organ, but it was time to head on to a new location. Let's go to the Toma, Wisconsin Goodwill. 
this is a much smaller location than the one in Lacrosse, but they did have everything kind of crammed into one location. I do like how they have all the toys in bulk so you can just buy bags full. However, they didn't really have any of the McDonald's ones that I'm searching for, but it was neat to see them bagged like this. I love seeing bagged stuff like this because you can usually get a really good deal on these toys. In a previous Goodwill video, I found the Taco Bell dog. This looked like the Taco Bell dog, but it wasn't a Taco Bell dog. Also, the toy section was very nicely stocked with tons of toy cars and little houses and things. And the game section was also cram packed with games. Although there really wasn't anything that I'm looking for in this section, I had to definitely take a look and see if there's anything that I wanted to bring home to game night. But there really wasn't anything I was looking for. I'm also always checking glassware for some cool pieces to put in my house, but I didn't see anything here either that I was looking for, so we continue moving on through the store. We didn't find anything at Goodwill, but we're gonna keep going. Isn't that right, Hazel? Next up was Dandelion Dust Thrift and Liquidation. I had heard about this online, but I had to come check it out for myself. It looks like a tiny little place, but they actually had so much stuff here. This is definitely a place you have to walk around and dig through the shelves because there was just so much of everything everywhere. And it's not just a thrift store, it's also a liquidation store, which means they get products straight from the stores. Okay, people who know bags, because I don't, is this a real Chanel bag just out here in the wild? I don't really know how to spot a fake one, so if you do know, comment below. This area back here had a lot of kitchen wares and cooking stuff, a lot of stuff for the kitchen. I'm not really looking for that right now, but it is good to know that this is here in case you do need to stock up on stuff for an apartment. I'm definitely more drawn to the toy section. Now this is a lot of like the liquidation stuff here, but I couldn't help but noticing under the table, they actually had a lot of stuff on top of the table as well, packaged up kind of like the Goodwill, but under here were sealed vintage toys, newer toys, and some in-between toys from fast food chains. So I dug through the bag just to see what they had. They had some vintage Lion King. Oh, this old Aladdin and it looks like it was a French wrapper maybe? Like how did that even get here? Discovery Channel stuff. I see some Paw Patrol down there. This is more the Discovery Channel thing. Let's see if we can find something really crazy in here. Oh! This is Burger King Kids Club. This is a hunchback of Notre Dame toy and they know what they have because they're selling it for what looks to be $21. This is back from 1996. We were running out of time for the day, but there was one more room I wanted to check and that was the book room. And unfortunately they didn't have any of the Goosebumps books that I was looking for. She swore she had them, but I did find this amazing clown print and I took it home. Of course I took it home with me for $2.50. You cannot beat that. There's so much here to look at, but I was quite happy with my purchase of this amazing clown print. It's gonna go up in my house. Now we have one more stop at the end of this video and it's back in Sparta at the furniture and antique store they have there. I remembered seeing the Furbies there and I wanted to grab them. But first check out this really cool cat in the hat phone they just got in. That's pretty neat looking. And of course I keep eyeing this Murano glass clown. I can't decide if I want to buy it. Should I get it or not? It's not that expensive but it does look like it's a little chip. I grabbed the Furbies and put them in my cart and it was time to go home and put them with the rest of the Furbies in my collection. It's slowly growing and I can't wait for it to get even bigger. If you want to see more of my collection or watch me build the collection even more, hit the subscribe button and the like button and definitely leave a comment below letting me know what your favorite thing to collect is and also watch one of these videos that YouTube thinks you would enjoy. I'll see you next week.